morning. So the Old Testament reading for today comes from Isaiah chapter 44, verses 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me, since I appointed an ancient people. Let them declare what is to come, and what will happen. Fear not, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from of old, and declared it? And you are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 18 through 27. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to creation, or its bondage to corruption, and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. I'm not sure what the custom is at the this service, but to stand. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Matthew chapter 13, beginning at verse 24 through 30, and then 36 through 43. He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also, and the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, Then you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest, at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, One who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and th throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. 
between services, uh, there was one thought that I remembered that um, I neglected, and that was uh, being a guest pastor. I don't know everyone. I'm gradually, I get to know a few each time uh, that I might be here, but um, no way for me to know everyone. So if there are visitors, we, I want to say a very special word of welcome to all worshipers and to uh, any visitors who might be here at Faith this morning to uh, please introduce yourself and sign the guest register so that the church can send a card of, of thanks. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. And we sent her in prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts and minds this day be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. I had the privilege of growing up in a nearby state on a farm. And there are two things that kind of stick in my mind uh, after these number of years. And one is that uh, in the soybean field, now the, there would be, I think it was cockleburs that would grow up in there. And so one of the hot summer day days like today and what we've experienced in recent days, one of the summer days would be spent in walking the bean field and uh, pulling out any weeds that were obvious so that when it came time to harvest, also uh, corn would sometimes grow up and that it was, the soybeans were a, a, a subsequent crop to the corn. And so sometimes there would be some corn that would pop up, but we could always tend to those problems now the oats field was a little bit different and it seems like it's maybe similar to what is told in our parables today. And that is that there would be some weeds that would grow up but somehow the combine must have cleared the good seed from the weeds that were present and it would be a, a, a clean harvest for use. Now we do live close to areas where there is where there is wheat grown today so this can be a very vivid image for some people but if you know you've not traveled out into uh, areas really not too far from here or thought about it um, there's a garden right over here when I drove drove in this morning noted the garden and a lot of the principles that Jesus teaches in these parables can also be, be observed in a, in a family or maybe a neighbor's garden or grandparents. Uh, they're close by. Last week, you may recall, was the gospel text was the parable of the sower. A sower went out to sow. And today the text is the parable of one who sowed good seed in his field and, it's, and along with that, we shared Jesus' explanation of the parable of the weeds. The previous chapter in Matthew raised a question. Why do people reject Jesus and enter into conflict with him? That's set up in chapter 12. And in chapter 13, we get these parables and another parable of Jesus that will be shared next week. The answer that the parable of the sower is that the seed sown by Jesus falls on four different kinds of soil. The seed sown in the path cannot take root there. It's the ground is too hard. And the evil one comes and picks up those seeds. Then there is um, the rocky ground. People receive the seed, which is the word, the word of God, but have no depth of soil. And so when trials or tribulations that they experience in life, they turn to the question, why is God allowing this to happen to me? And they will sometimes wither then off of the uh, 
the vine, so to speak, the thorny ground. People receive the word, but the cares of the, of the world and the lure of riches choke the growing plant. The good soil produces 30, 60, 100 fold. Now, I think for a, a good part of my ministry, I always understood this parable to be that these were four, or these were, you could group individuals into the four different groups depending on which soil they were. But more recently, we learn a lot of things even after seminary. We, more recently, I came, uh, I was told of the uh, understanding that all of us have all four soils. And so there are times when there might be a, a word of God there for us, but we just have a hard time picking that up, or it doesn't take root because it's on the hard path. Or there are certain aspects of our life where it's like the rocky soil. And we'll do a discipline. You know, a lot of times, uh, I, I must confess about this, even like with physical activity and, and training, there are some times that I do really well for a few weeks, a few months, but then I let go. Well, that's what's happening. That can happen also spiritually. And uh, there are times when you do something, but other things distract you. And there are times when we are among those that produce 60 or 30, 60, and 100 fold. This week's parable suggests that any lack of faith is the work of the enemy. It is the enemy who sows weeds. And among the wheat that sprouted, growing in the good soil, the enemy sowed weeds. And that teaches us that faith is a constant struggle. Like a roaring lion, in fact, Peter writes, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. So even as very strong Christians, we can be caught up in that turmoil. It is clear that we live our lives in the midst of conflict of two powers, God and Satan. In Christian terms, we use, we use freely saints and sinners live intermixed within the body of Christ. In Lutheran terms, we also emphasize that at the same time in faith, we are just and still a sinner. We need that confession and repentance and transformation of life that the Spirit only can give. We are both weeds and wheat at the same time. The good news in all of this is that Jesus is the stronger one. The stronger one encountered the power of evil in the wilderness and prevailed. The stronger one encountered the power of evil on the cross in death, but prevailed in the resurrection. Who hasn't had the thought that, you know, God raised his son from death, that he couldn't intervene dramatically in history and put an end to all the suffering that we experience? The parable raises the question we all ask about the persistent and disturbing presence of evil in the world that our loving and uh, gra grace-filled God created for us. It seems so sensible to us. But instead of applying the acts to judgment, Jesus patiently continued in forgiveness and a call to repentance. His heart was a compassionate heart, and he would reach out to individuals who were rejected by society and culture and extend his ministry to them. God is patient with us. Jesus continued in forgiveness and a call to repentance. He was patient, and by the power of the Spirit, we too can be patient with others. William Barclay, in his commentary on uh, this particular segment of Matthew's Gospel, gives us five insights about uh, these verses. 
He said this parable, one is that this parable teaches us that there is always a hostile power in the world seeking and waiting to compromise the good seed. And so we would draw from this that we have to always be on our guard and under the influence and power of the Spirit. It teaches us how hard it is to distinguish between those who are in the kingdom and those who are not. A person may appear to be good, but may in fact be, uh, have just a, a broken, sin-filled life. And a person may appear to be bad and yet be good. We are very often much too quick to label people good or bad without knowing all of the facts or all of the story. If the reapers had had their way, they would have torn out the Darnell. Darnell um, is a weed, but it looks exactly like the wheat plant. It's really tough to distinguish the two. But if you tear out the Darnell, the bearded Darnell, you would be tearing out too much of the good, uh, too many of the good plants. So it teaches us not to be quick in our judgments. A person may make a major mistake and by God's grace be redeemed, be transformed by the power of the Spirit. A person may live a life filled and suddenly collapse into sin or brokenness and utter separation from God. No one who only sees part of, the, of a person can judge. And it is only God who sees the whole life of every individual. The lesson does teach us that judgment does come, but is not hasty. At the end of the age, God will judge. It teaches us that only God can discern the good and from, from the broken. To know these key applications, we add the question, how are we then to live our life as fruit-bearing wheat in a weed-infested world? One is that we learn from Jesus' perseverance. The farmer never sows one, and the farmer never sows one seed at a time. The Son of Man sows the whole wheat of field of wheat so that each individual stock can be of support to the next. And so as a community of faith, we are called to be of support to one another and be present and minister to one another. The farmer never sows one seed at the time. And so uh, we persevere with others who are persevering with us. We persevere, bearing witness to little harvests of justice, persons drawn to faith, persons transformed by the power of the Spirit, harvests of justice that anticipate the great harvest at the end of time, where we dwell with the Lord forever in his presence in his blessing. May the Spirit grant it. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in a living faith in the risen Christ. Amen.